What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. We're talking about the information that was released in the V Jump early this morning. And um, since I went to this article in the early morning, it looks like they've updated it a lot. So a whole bunch of new cards. I'm going to try and discuss them in a somewhat timely manner. These are all from Duelist Pack 16, which uh, translates into Duelist Pack Battle City. You see here, if you want some information, it's going to be 45 cards in the OCG. We're going to get a couple of more cards. And uh, this set is going to be coming out in about three months in the TCG. It says June 19th right here, which is one day after my birthday. And then about two weeks before that in the, uh, the OCG. So very, very close to getting this set. And actually, it's kind of surprising that they're coming out so close together. So anyways... I remember this card from the original anime when um Joe, you know, excuse me, Merrick and Mai were dueling on top of the blimp in the um and the semifinals or no, actually it was in the top eight. And um <laughs> what's it called? Uh, Mai ended up taking the Winged Dragon of Ra with like the Amazon Chain Master or something like that, and then she couldn't summon it because she realized that she couldn't speak or she couldn't read um Egyptian. It was like epic failure, and then Merrick just took the card and proceeded to beat the crap out of her so anyways this is the winged dragon of Ra, but it's in its spear form so it's level 10 the attack and defense are always unknown because it is the winged dragon of Ra, and it is um it's a divine attribute which i almost forgot what that um what it looks like it almost looks like the um the light attribute symbols like you you rarely ever see it because there's only like what five monsters that are divine i think only the egyptian gods are divine actually so all right cannot be special summoned so even if you do summon this guy and it dies, you won't be able to revive it with like soul charge or anything. Requires three tributes to normal summon to your side of the field or three tributes to uh, or three tributes of your opponent's monsters to normal summon to your opponent's side of the field. So if your opponent happens to have the gen lock or they have vanity's emptiness, you can tribute all of their monsters because once again, it is a normal summon and uh not that many monsters that have that ability. Um, the next effect actually makes that kind of like advantageous. The control of this normal summon card is returned to its original owner at the end of the next turn. So essentially, if you summon this, like if your opponent had a, a gen lock on you and maybe they had a unicorn plus um, a bond you, you know, you give this to them, tribute all of their monsters. And then the, at the end of the next turn, it just bounces right back to your hand. So it's like you technically didn't go neg. <laughs> you actually went plus. Plus like a bunch. All right. So effect number one cannot attack and cannot be targeted for an attack by an opponent's card effect. OK, um, fair enough. <laughs> effect number two, you can tribute this card special summon one winged dragon of Ra from your deck, ignoring special summoning conditions. OK, I like that. But its attack becomes attack and defense both become 4,000. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so basically, this card translates into kind of like the hand of Niffy's. Uh, it, it kind of seems like it's almost that card verbatim. Uh, I mean, obviously, it requires much more of um, like harsher summoning conditions, having to tribute three monsters. But in essence, this is kind of like an easy button to the Wing Dragon of Ra. Like, you don't even have to draw Ra. You can just special summon it straight from your deck. It gets 4,000 attack and defense. Hey, maybe you Mega Morph it. You get it to 8,000 and just kill your opponent in one swing or something like that. So, it's kind of cool that you can get Wing Dragon of Ra, like, straight out to the field. And he gets fucking, he gets Obelus's stat line. You know what I mean? I'm I'm pretty sure Obelus has 4,000 defense. I, don't, I, I think Obelus has 4,000 defense. I know his attack is 4,000. So, that's a pretty interesting card. And again, I'm always happy when we get more divine cards because again, I think I think there's only like two or three. I mean, I think there's only three of them in the game. All right, so this next one is uh, Jiragio, and let's look at the artwork right quick. Okay, um, interesting. Kind of looks like you're running the mill demon. So I'm gonna guess it's a fiend. Level four, dark, seventeen, thirteen. As far as the stat line, it is a fiend. It just, I mean, the, the picture just screened. I'm a fiend. So. During your during the battle step of either player's turn, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, gain 1,000 life points. I'm fine with that. There's there's never going to be enough ways to gain life points in this game. Effect number two, during either player's turn, you contribute this card, then target one face-up monster you control that targets gains 1,000 attack until the end of the turn. Okay, so that's not bad. I mean, this card has a decent amount of utility. I kind of like the fact that you can go like you can have a monster on board you can attack 
and then in that same damage step without have committed your normal summon you can essentially special summon this guy and be like ha surprise motherfucker and just attack your opponent again you gain a thousand when you do and then if your opponent tries to attack this guy you could obviously just tribute it to power up one of your monsters or if your opponent tries to kill one of your other monsters because their monster or that monster is weaker than 17 you could just tribute it and you can give it the 1000 bonus so i mean if nothing else you should get a thousand life points out of this guy I just would have liked if Konami had given it like some other little bit of pizzazz, like made it a tuner or something. Give it just that extra boost because it's already it's already obviously to be used as a utility card. But, you know, give it like make it make it like the maximum utility card. All right. So we have some type of jester here. It is level four. Um, dark 13, 15 stat line. I'm going to assume that this is a fiend as well. Okay, it's a spellcaster. I was going to say, spellcaster probably would have been my second guess. Psychic would have been my third. All right, so this is Legion of the Fiend Jester. You can only use the number two effect of Legion of the Fiend Jester once per turn. During your main, effect number one, during your main phase, you can tribute one spellcaster type monster in addition to your normal summon or set. Okay. Oh, you can tribute summon one. Gotcha. So in addition to your normal summoner set, you can uh, also additionally get a tribute summon of a spellcaster monster. That doesn't seem that great. You only get this effect or you can only gain this effect once per turn. And that's all right. I mean, honestly, who really like a lot of people don't tribute stuff unless it's like lockdown monsters like um, Vanity's Fiend, Majesty's Fiend, Spell Canceler. Um, beyond that, the only other monsters you commonly see tributed are like Cleefort. So we sure as hell not really special. We're, we're not really tribute summoning spellcasters. Like the only deck that really runs high level spellcasters is Prophecy, and they're not tribute summoning. Even when Demok eventually comes back, like ain't nobody tributing for Demok. Motherfucker's gonna throw that card in Infernoids and reasoning that motherfucker out. You know what I mean? Um, effect number two: If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one spellcaster normal from your deck. To or your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so I mean, I guess this is supposed to be is was this one of like Yugi's cards? Because this kind of seems like Dark Magician support. The fact that when it dies, it gets to add um a normal spellcaster from the deck or the graveyard to the hand. That just screams that Yugi's Dark Magician died or that he tutored it to get Dark Magician. So that kind of seems like a Yugi card to me. But I mean, I, I could be mistaken. Like maybe he um Maybe he used that card in the duel versus the fucking mime dude who had uh, who had uh, Slifer or um, yeah Slifer the executive producer. Okay, so anti magic arrows. This is a quick play spell card. I'm I, I'm actually really liking that artwork though, and I just like I like quick plays in general. It looks like an ultra rare. All right, cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. Uh, legit <laughs> super polymerization. <laughs> basically okay so this card is officially a spell speed four because um it doesn't say like the targeting card or anything like that it just says cards and effects <laughs> awesome we have another spell feed we have another spell speed four and i was arguing with somebody on dueling network um that they were saying that poly or that super poly was broke because it's a spell speed four okay so technically that means that this card by that by that logic has to be broke all right um effect number one during either player's battle phase, until the end of the turn, spells and traps and spell slash trap effects cannot be activated. Okay, that's really cool. You know, this card would be even better if Royal Oppression was still legal because <laughs> essentially your opponent wouldn't be able to activate something like um Royal Oppression. So this card is kind of like, this could be... You know what? This could be the replacement for Trap Stun. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of why I would play... Like, I was thinking about this card, and I was like, eh, it seems mediocre. And then I was like, wait, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Trap Stun's still a thing, and this card is basically Trap Stun, but, like, infinitely better because your opponent can't... They can't respond to it. Like, they, they can't they can't Solemn Scolding this. They can't do anything. They can't activate any of their cards. They just... They, they have no way... And you can activate this from the hand. This card actually seems really, really good. Oh, my God. I actually... I just went full 360 on this card, especially in a deck like Battery Man or Car Curry Machine, the decks where you're just trying to like OTK your opponent. Like it'd be great if it said monster effects too. Nah, nah, that would that would be too broke. That would be too broken. Alright, so 
Next card, this also looks like an ultra rare. Um, this is obviously a trap hole. It kind of looks like acid trap hole a little bit. Or, yeah, this is some type of trap hole. Or maybe, it, I guess it's not. It's called Multiple Destruction. It's a normal trap. I think this, this might be the card that's crazy. One of these cards in this article is fucking bananas. I think this is the one. You can only activate one Multiple Destruction per turn. Okay, that's usually a good sign of powerful card. Uh, let's see. If there are three or more cards in either player in each player's hand, each player places all of the cards from their hand to the bottom of their deck in any order. And if they do, you lose 800 life points for each card returned to the deck. This way, then each player draws five cards. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! This card. This card. Oh my! It's three or more, dude. This card has the potential troll factor. This card, this card, okay, man, this card has the potential to be, like, almost ban-worthy in my opinion. Like, okay, I I understand why they made it a trap, because if they didn't, um, like, Exodia, you know what I mean? Like, oh, God, this is, like, super reload, but this card has the potential to be broken simply because it lets each player draw five cards and... If you don't remember the original Morphin Jar, that's what got it banned. That card discarded all your cards and then made you draw. This kind of seems like they're trying to replace Morphin Jar, but they're trying to, like, make it not literally as easy to use because they made it a trap. They made it so each player had to have three cards. They made it so that you take damage, but each player still gets a fresh new hand. Um, Again, I'm... I'm going to be honest. I think that somebody's going to find a way to break this card. Anytime you get to draw five cards, motherfuckers will find it the, the, the time to break the card. Look at all the, the cards in the past, whether it's Sixth Sense or Mirage of Nightmare, Card Destruction, Morphing Jar. Like Anytime you can draw like four cards, it doesn't matter how bad it is. Players will find a way to break it. So um, expect this card to like eventually be limited to one. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just calling it right now. Then we have another Ritual guy. I actually read this one last night. It's okay. It's not the greatest name. Uh, it's lights. Um, I think we got nine stars and 2700, 1200. Stat line is very respectable. Looks like it could be a spellcaster because it kind of looks like a magician. It's a fairy. Damn it. But um, okay. Light fairies. That's been a thing since forever. It's called um, Sibi Sibia. Taro Trey. Oh my god, why do they make these things so fucking difficult to pronounce? Dude, they need to change that name to like Michael in the TCG or something. We just just call the card David or Eric. Give it just like a generic name, a generic like standard American name. Its name is now Tony. All right, it's a light fairy ritual. Um, we already know about the stat line. It can be special summoned by its own ritual. We're just going to call it that. I and mean, we're going to call it the Tony ritual. <laughs> All right. You can only use the one or the two effects of Tony once per turn and only once that turn. Effect number one during either player's turn. Uh, you can target one face down monster. Change its position to face up attack position. Um, okay. That's not bad. You know what? That's actually not nearly as, as bad as what I was thinking. I must have been like extremely sleepy when i was reading these cards i thought they were all like terrible and now i'm thinking that they're not bad because you can essentially just set a shadow monster and then just instantly reflip it i mean granted it might be a little difficult to get a ritual and shadows but that's not the point the point is you can just like set a flip monster and then just flip it face up and get the effect effect number two during either player's turn you can target one face up monster change it to face down position oh Okay, so it has a built-in Book of Moon. Um, <laughs> Book of Moon is a limited card, so I'm pretty sure that that's powerful. Not to mention, you can have this guy on board. You can summon your Manju, and then you can just reset your Manju and then flip it over and then use it again. And also, that's during either player's turn. So if your opponent tries to attack this with a Valk or something crazy, all you have to do is be like, mm, you wanted to kill it with Construct? Mm, I don't think so. Can't let you do that, Star Fox. And then you just make it, you just use your Book of Moon effect. Effect number three. During your end phase, you can special summon one flip monster from your hand or from your graveyard in face down position. Okay, this card is definitely legitimate. Everything that I thought about this card, it being bad, is just, I was clearly just dumb. I, this card is built in Book of Moon. It has built in Book of Taiyu. They're both quick effects. And during your end phase, you can just special summon a flip monster from your hand or your graveyard, which, I mean, come on. I, I want pluses. I'm getting it from the graveyard, baby. 
All right, so uh, maybe we might have to get some Night Assailant action going on. Discard Night Assailant, get other flip monsters, constantly juggle. And it looks like this is the uh, ritual spell. Let's see if it's as good as like the Necro's Mirrors. <laughs> it won't be. All right, so this is used to summon the um, the Tony ritual. We're just we're calling it Tony because I'm not gonna keep pronouncing that. All right, number one ritual summon one Tony from your hand by tributing monsters you control or have in your hand whose levels equal nine or more. Eh, that's okay. Um, is Sharit any ritual or is Sharit just um, Necro's rituals? Because if we can use Sharit for this, that would be awesome. Number two, you can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Tony monster from your deck to your hand. Oh, okay, so that's how they reverse power creeped it. Um, if it's in your graveyard after you summon it, you can just banish it and you get another copy. Fair enough. You cannot activate this effect during the, or during the same turn that it was sent to the graveyard. Fair enough. This card seems like it's been adjusted to power creep. Um, once you activate it, if it's just sitting in your graveyard, the way that you can get your card advantage back is by banishing it and then searching another copy of the ritual monster itself. So seems legit. And next we have, um, oh, we have some of the actual art type support for the Tonys. And, oh, okay, it makes sense. They're all flip effect monsters. So this one is a wind fairy. It's, um, is it, is wind? Okay, is wind. It, come on now, they should have made them like all water. <laughs> I don't want people flipping up like, um, goes a match on me and me just losing all right 1000 attack 1400 defense um i don't really care that the attack isn't that high because it's a flip monster so usually i want it face down anyway um if this card is flip face up you can add one ritual spell card from your deck to your or from your deck or graveyard to your hand okay because for a second there, I was like, wait a minute, are you just basically a flip effect version of Senju? How is that good? But you can get it from the graveyard, so that's actually pretty good. Um, we have a spooky card with cat eyes, and this cat looks like it is seriously about to do some bad shit. This is why I don't like cats, because I think cats are just evil. Black Cat's Glare, it's a normal trap card. During your opponent's battle phase, if you control two or more face down defense position monsters in the battle phase. OK, so it's kind of like um, a threatening roar as long as you have a whole bunch of set stuff. Effect number two, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two face up monsters, including Tony monsters, change them to face down defense. That's not actually that bad because it obviously is specifically meant for the Tony art type. Um, if you have it in your graveyard, you just it's kind of like kind of reminds me of like Sinister Shadow games. It's a way that you can just constantly um, use your, your monsters uh, flip effects like over and over again. So, yeah, it kind of works specifically with the flip mechanic. You know, you just banish this. Even if your opponent was about to attack one of your dudes, you just flip them face down. And since it's uh, from the graveyard, it's not like your opponent. Wait a minute. Mm, I don't think it's um, I don't think it's a quick effect. I don't think you can use it during your opponent's turn. Anyways, regardless, it still does let you use your flip effects multiple times. <clears throat> All right, so this is Aqua Princess Guppy. Mm, artwork is really cutesy. She looks like she came out of like the Madoche art type or something like that. She's water level two, 600, 600. She's an aqua. Once per turn, you can special summon one aqua actress monster from your hand. Fair enough. And <laughs> there's aqua actress, I assume. <laughs> this art type cannot be playable. It is way too adorable, cute, and <laughs> they spent so much effort on that artwork, though. All right, she's, what, level six, water, probably aqua, 2,000, 2,000. Why are all their stats, why are their attacks and defense, like, all the same? Once per turn, you can add one aqua, okay, so this is aqua actress, um, arowana. Once per turn, you can add one aqua actress monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, okay. They have a continuous spell card, which I like the artwork on it. Kind of reminds me of like the Australian, like um, like the beaches and stuff. The I'm forgetting what it's called, but I'll eventually Google it. This is the uh, aquarium stage. It's a continuous spell. Water monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle except with water monsters. Thank God, because those stats on those guys are not impressive. <laughs> Number two, aqua actress monsters you control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Okay, <laughs> so they can't be destroyed by traps and monster effects and spells. Sweet. We need to keep this card protected. <laughs> we need um, Malefic Stardust up in this. Oh, no, it's a continuous um. We continue a spell, not a field spell. All right, number three. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one aqua type monster in your graveyard 
special summon it, or you can target one. I didn't say you can add one. Um, in your graveyard, special summon it. You cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except aqua type monsters. Oh, right. So um, if they needed a card to make them playable, I'm pretty sure this is it. <laughs> not only does this make all of the monsters unaffected, not only does this make all of the monsters unable to die. Well, I mean, it makes the aqua actresses unaffected by card effects. None of the monsters can die by battle. And then when it dies, it pays for itself. Uh, me likey this. This is definitely good. Next card is seems to be more water. And it's another continuous spell. Um, aquarium lighting. You can only control one aquarium lighting. All right, so it must be kind of powerful. During damage calculations, when an aqua actress monster, you control battles an opponent's monster, you can activate this effect. Double the attack and defense of that monster you control during damage calculate. Holy shit. Damn, dude. So basically, every time you go into damage cow, you can just get a free honest because that's fucking fair. Oh, no, it's not even a free honest. It's a free crane. That's fucking fair. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it's not even original attack. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Effect number three. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one aqua monster and OK, you special summon it and then you can't special summon any. OK, it's the same thing from um. From the what's it called? From the uh, from this one, from the aquarium stage. Uh, these two cards seem legit. Like these might be your new mermaids, people. <laughs> if they give this, if they give this art type more than two monsters, they might be legit as hell. Because that aqua, the aqua actress isn't that impressive by herself. But when you combine these other cards, like she gets legit as hell. And then they're talking about some other random stuff. Um, I think this is part of the magicians and actually you guys are right. Um, like I remember time glazer magician time blazer magician. You, you know the one I'm talking about that came out of the the um, Structure deck. It's just it was such a crappy card. Nobody ever played it. All right So this is noble dragon magician like the artwork um, That is a girl though. It's kind of weird. She has like uh, No, those aren't her ears anyways uh, level 3 pendulum scale 5 700 1400 as far as the stat line and actually, I think we're going to break this up into two videos. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, sorry. We only have two more cards to go. <laughs> All right. Bear with me, guys. I know I've been taking forever. It's going to be a 20-minute video. You'll watch. All right. Um, pendulum effect. If you do not control a magician card in the other pendulum scale, destroy this card. Uh, that sucks. So you can't play this card dolo. Monster effect. Cannot be used as synchro. Oh, you're a tuner? Oh, okay. You're a tuner. I didn't even realize that. That's my bad. Um... Yeah, oh, this was the one that they were talking about. This is the um, this was the tuner one that I was talking about in the other video. Fair enough. Uh, so it cannot be used as a synchro material except for a dragon synchro. Um, debris dragon has that too, if I'm not mistaken. Some, yeah, I think debris dragon uh, has that too. Okay, um, if the other synchro monster is not an odd eyes monster, place this card at the bottom of the deck when you use it as synchro material. Um, for the most part, don't really care. Even if it goes to the bottom of the deck, I don't really care. I don't. If it doesn't go to the extra deck, like I don't really care. Uh, let's see. If this card is in your hand or your graveyard, you can special summon one level seven or higher odd eyes monster you control. Have that card lose three levels, and if it does, special summon this card. Okay, so clearly they want you to be able to do some crazy synchro plays with this, and I guess they're shooting for like level seven or something like that. That's interesting. It looks like it's gonna have to spit. Uh, spit. It's gonna have to fit specifically into a deck that uses a lot of dragons, S specifically odd eyes ones. Oh my goodness, the card art on this is great. This dude looks like a gravekeeper, doesn't he? Why aren't you a gravekeeper, sir? You look like you should be part of the like new gravekeeper support, which I'm not confirming or anything. I'm just that's hypothetical. All right, so he's wind, um, level six, pendulum scale two, twenty one fourteen. Stats aren't that great for a level six. This is the Peasant Dragon Magician. It's, uh, let's see. The Pendulum Effect is, you can only use the Pendulum Effect of Peasant Dragon Magician once per turn. If you control a Magician card in your other Pendulum Scale, you can add one face-up Magician or Odd Eyes Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand, except um, itself. That's not bad. Basically, if any of your guys died earlier in the game to like MST or something like that, or if you use Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, then you can just put them back in your hand. 
the monster effect is, which mm, I guess you might use, um, you can only use the monster effect of Pendula, or excuse me, a peasant, dragon, magician once per turn. If this normal summon or special summon card, or excuse me, if this card is normal or special summon, you can target one magician, Pendula, monster, or odd eyes monster in your graveyard, accept itself, and add it to your hand. All right, so if it's a Pendulum, if it's pe if the Pendulum effect gets the monster from the Pendulum zone and the monster effect gets it from the graveyard, mm, fair enough. It's, um, it's a pretty interesting card. It's pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. I think the artwork is absolutely fantastic. I hope that these uh, magicians are finally tied together because um, like, if you were betting everything on Time Blazer or Time Blazer Magician, that card was just kind of booty. But um, this looks like a lot of interesting and good stuff. Um, these aqua spells, these these aqua spells are insane. They they seem really really good. Uh, just I mean, are you serious? Instant crane, and they can't be. Uh, they're not affected by anything. And then we have the this new art type right here, which I'm calling the Tonys for right now because pronunciation is a bitch. And then we have the card that essentially is going to replace Trapstone. <laughs> this card, oh my god, it's spell speed four. It is insane. And uh, this, I don't know, we got a lot of interesting things here. Not to mention the um, the the card right here that makes both players draw five cards. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always.